Dim Mac Records started in 1996. I was 19 in college. Wake up! Actually, at the time, I was living in the, the Pickle Patch, which was um, an apartment that three of my friends and myself would have bands come and play in our living room. And um, we've had the Pickle Patch itself kind of evolved and changed different locations. And in total, we've, we've had over like 450 bands play in our space. And the, the first manifestation was the, this apartment that I started my label in. And that apartment, um, I mean, we, in that apartment, we had like uh, at the drive-in with the Rapture. We had Chit 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 like a number of times. There's no like marketing plans. There's no business plans. There's no investing. There's no game plan. There's no board of directors meetings. So it's basically an idea and finding a way to get that idea done. I had my first zine when I was in high school you know, interviewing bands, I was taking pictures by then, you know, I was putting on shows by the time I was 16, I was also in bands myself. So, and th these are all things uh, that don't require money, they just require time. And when you're a kid, you have time. You're in school, you know. So, and all the kids around you, if you hang around with kids that do that all the time, you're gonna learn pretty quickly. And you wanna be part of that community, you wanna be a productive member of that community, so you, you uh, want to be in the band. You want to start the zine. You want to join your friends and go to Kinko's late at night and steal copies and make a zine, which is exactly what I did with the label. And uh, starting the label cost me $400. And you know, I was involved with, with uh, the art and design of every record, whether I designed it myself or I had a friend design it. I was very hands-on with the, the whole operation. Doing the prints myself, doing the silk screens myself, you know, a lot of it was just, it's exclusive, it's like an exclusive club, you want to make each record special, and, and, uh, and that's, that's, that's the birth of Dimbach. Dimbach 001 was a 7 inch, I partnered with another label called Bastille Records, they're good friends of mine, um, John and Gabe Bound, they were my friends from high school. The band was called Stick for Your Carousel, and it cost us $1,200. You know, the whole of the process is distribution. How are you going to distribute these fucking records? I found one distributor, Ebullition Records from Goleta, which is in Santa Barbara. I worked for them. I would intern for them. I would, I, for seven years, I wrote reviews and I had a column in that in their magazine, Heart Attack, and I did it all for free. The whole time I was in Santa Barbara, I think it was, you know, 90, 96 to 2002. 2002. Um, I, um, I was lucky and I got to release The Kills' first record, Black Rose Street EP. That was a major st stepping stone for Dimock. I was their merch guy, I was their road manager, I was their driver, and I was their first label in the US. 2003 is when I got the first Block Party 7 inch sent to me. She's hearing voices. And that's when I realized this, this is my huge break. I just found one of the most important bands I've ever heard of in my life. All right, so 2003, that's year one of Dimock in LA. We just started throwing really small, but really cool parties in Hollywood. I mean, I was DJing at the parties, but I wasn't a DJ. I was just playing records. And the, the kinds of uh, people that would come to DJ or that we'd, we'd invite to DJ were bands. So no one could properly DJ at a Dimock party in 2003. We would have uh, Carlos from Interpol, Nick from the Yeah Yeahs, Jenny from uh, Rilo Kylie. Just like that kind of scene, it was very indie. That was the whole vibe. We just kind of branched out and did a bunch of parties throughout LA. Fun, indie crowd. It was very different from an actual rave with dance music. Um, and even at that time, I had no idea about raves. Honestly, I didn't know DJs, I didn't know dance music or EDM world at all. You know, Dimock was primarily entirely a rock label. And at that time, it's like from 2003 to 2006, um, I just evolved as a DJ. Uh, you know, I went from playing records to actually becoming a DJ. And then, you know, with the kind of uh, influence of all the remixes going on of the rock bands, 
that was really the gateway for me to get into electronic music. So by 2006, we were doing these, the Dimac party in, uh, at Cinespace, which, you know, we've been doing that for seven years now. And that's when uh, 2006 was a really big year for electro. This is actually the, the first year electro kind of came into form. Um, so inviting, you know, busy P from Ed Banger and what he, what his whole camp was doing to come play at our club and, you know, Justice and Boys Noise. And I mean, that was all like kind of emerging at that time. And, and it started uh, 2007 is when we signed two artists that shaped Dimock as more of a dance-driven label. Uh, Bloody Beat Roots and Mastercraft.